up to go with the wall of her. Let's stick in the shinty bowl to break the brack, the crack, and all. Let's call it an Irish pub. Every shot, go get your pub. The Guinness put in the cabbage crap. The eye don't want to be paddy trap. We'll call it an Irish pub. While I'll be fucked as Welcome to episode one of the Pubcast. My name is Brendan O'Neill, and I would normally be joined by Mike Cross and Michelle Riley. But in these first few episodes, we are re- revisiting our previous podcast, Boardwalk Breakdown. Basically, we're shutting down the Boardwalk Breakdown podcast and moving those 13 episodes over here so we can keep them alive and well in our archives. So, the Pubcast is our new podcast where we'll talk about all kinds of stuff and not be limited to only talking about Boardwalk Empire. And it will actually begin on episode 14. So just consider these first 13 episodes as bonus content. Slancha. Welcome to the Boardwalk Breakdown podcast featuring Michelle Riley, Michael Cross, and me, Brendan O'Neill. Basically, we're fans of the HBO show Boardwalk Empire, providing some analysis and silly commentary. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact us on Twitter, at Boardwalk Break. Enjoy the show. Um, Alright, so so season two is a whole new day. Season two opens, and on the heels of season one... Uh, where the Commodore is trying to take over for right. Nucky again. And Jimmy's um, involved. Nucky and suspects Eli. the Commodore, Jimmy, and Eli's alliance. And the three of them um, decide to sort of in in uh, uh, a nice parallel, uh, had they pulled it off, frame Nucky for election fraud, which is exactly what Commodore went right. to the jail for. With right, right, right. Um, so that's going on. Uh, Lucy <laughs> is pregnant with Van Alden's child, which is amazing. That's a ridiculous combination of people. That definitely took guts to write that into the script. That was because that was a that was a curveball. Yeah, curveball, almost far fetched, but all right. Van Alden's insane enough that fine, great, he can pull that off. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, Lucy um, lives with Van Alden. He, she has the kid. Um, and then the scenes with Van Alden in the house or in the apartment with Lucy and the kid screaming and his just being uncomfortable in his own skin anyway. And then this kid screaming in his ear and Lucy being Lucy in front of him is... He, he wants to kill everybody in the room. Yeah. He wants out. He yeah. wants out. It, it, that's those scenes are amazing. Right. So uh, thank anyway. God for the nanny, right? Uh, <laughs> well, the nanny comes in a little bit later, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and here's an interesting twist that I th- I enjoyed particularly because um, Margaret meets <laughs> Nucky's new driver. Yeah. And his new driver, not Jimmy. His new driver is this guy, Owen Slater. Owen, the Irishman. From Ireland. And he's sort of a, a, a shadowy figure. You don't know where he came from, what happened. He's, he's clearly IRA associated. He's, he's from totally. Ireland. Yeah. And Very IRA-ish. But, but, he, but that's kind of hidden the first couple episodes when you see him. Eventually, I had that feeling. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, you don't come no to America surprise. like that and work for Nucky Thompson if you're not... Right. Um... So God one of the things, great character though. Handsome I really great character. Too. Really he's, liked him. Slick. I believe he's English or uh, born somewhere. in London. Yes. There you go. There you go. Well, he's a handsome devil. That's oh, sure. all right. So that was a great that was a great sideline to the story. But Margaret really really developed her relationship with Nick with Nucky right. in this season. So, for the worst. Yeah, I mean, from my mind, you have the Val, you always have the Van Alden segment. But clearly you have the mob wars, and we're going into full-scale war in, yeah. this, in this season. Yeah. You always have this relationship between Margaret and Nucky, and then later with Owen. Um, and then you find out just sort of details about the whole Jimmy Commodore um, Jillian situation. I would say those are really the main points exactly. of season two. Um, Jimmy's role is interesting because he's always trying to find his way. He's always trying to be the guy. He's, he's not quite the guy yet. He seems like, uh, you know, I, I know later on we're going to get into creepiest characters, saddest characters. 
he's the <laughs> most lost person on yeah. the show. Clearly. He might I be mean, the saddest character. He, sure. he definitely is in the running for saddest character because he's a guy who, you know, he comes back from the war. He's, he's obviously uh, put forth a heroic effort of some sort there. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, now he limp. comes back, he's nothing, and he ha- absolutely cannot find his way. And he's doing things that are clearly going to be his undoing. Yeah. And a- as you're watching them, you know that this is coming eventually. Yeah. And it's almost... He might be the most compelling person in the first two seasons in that yeah. there's almost that want for him to <coughs> succeed in a way. Yeah, yeah. and I, he's, you know, he's, you, you he's feel like potential in every stage of his life. Well, you feel like you know, he goes yeah. to Princeton and that doesn't, yeah, work, doesn't out, work out. He doesn't work out, he goes to, to war, war. And obviously that's left some scars. He comes home to a marriage that's clearly not right. Right. Um, and the situation with Nucky goes south. I mean, there's just every every way you think he's going to be the star. He He's poised to be the quarterback in every situation, and he ends up... And he fails. And, he well, and he yeah. so desires to be Nucky. I mean, that's his dream, is to take over for Nucky, right? To, 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 to be the guy in charge. To be the guy in charge. And, but but what I, where I was going to go with that is, is that they're so astronomically different right. people. Right, right. Uh, you know... Jimmy's fundamentally good. Right. Jimmy is fundamentally good, and his rule He's in is that Margaret gonna, role almost. And it, like his rule is going to be a, with the fist, yep. right? Where Nucky is fundamentally flawed, and his rule is with the pen, right? Yeah. Or with the brain, yeah, exactly. right? He rules by authority, not Nucky's, by muscle. Nucky's naturally corrupt. He has to make an effort to be the politician. Exactly. Jimmy's naturally a regular guy, has to make an effort to become the gangster. Yes, so and he, he never mo- quite makes it. Is there. he more of the... Is, is he the character in the show that we should be looking at at this point as the one who might have some re- redeeming character? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's the way they positioned yeah. him from day one, is that that is... He's and you're flawed, you're, you're, but he can flawed. Only, just a flawed only, person. Yeah. Who's right, but not only trying to that, that, the redemption, you feel like you're waiting for this connection. You know, you're watching the show and you're going, Well, Nucky sure is awful, but gosh, if he can if he can forge this um, relationship with Jimmy yeah. his father son yeah. his father son connection yeah. and he can he can make good on this, there's gonna be redemption there too. Um yeah. And Scorsese never fails to deliver. <laughs> of course. I'm killing that dream. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's like the end of uh, Casino when, you know, uh, when people are being shoveled into the into a cornfield in northwest Indiana. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you knew this was coming. You were hoping it would end differently, but you knew it was going to happen, right? Yeah. So, um, in Jimmy's effort to become, effectively, Nucky, to become a, a, a big shot, he makes allies with guys like Rothstein. We are introduced to Manny Horvitz mm-hmm. um, from Philly. Philly. He's from? Yeah. yeah. Right? My, one of my all-time favorite the butcher. minor characters. Was the he butcher. the Butcher? He was yep. the Butcher. The Butcher. Played by William Forsythe. William Forsythe. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. An amazing, amazing actor who is, uh, I have to interject that this is, is one of the complete psychos of the acting world. Yeah. He always plays American a me. complete he is a psycho. psychopath. He's got something in the eye. There, yeah, he's, he's never played a regular guy. Him. He has never once played a straight man. Uh, <laughs> and he always plays it to the nth degree with epic proficiency. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, awesome epic as is an, a good as a, the as a character actor. So, in Jimmy's relationship with those two guys plus Eli, they develop this plan to kill Nucky, right? Um, and there's that one scene in Babette's um, where the Nucky's schmoozing with whoever, and they're getting ready for the show. And he looks down. There's sort of the, it's not an aisle, but it's a crowd of people, and you can kind of see through. And Jimmy's walking toward him, and, and Nucky's sort of, oh, my God, looking around like, what, what do I do? This guy's going to kill me. You can see in Jimmy's eyes, Jimmy's about to come toward him and do something. Jimmy grabs him, hugs him, and says something like, uh, you know, be careful what you wish for or whatever it is. Um, a little, little whisper to him, like, watch your ass. And it was loud in Babatsa. It was that. loud. Yeah, it was like a... Walks away, yeah. and, and no one knows anything. And right behind Jimmy is the gunman mm-hmm. shooting Nucky. Nucky puts his hand up. Gets shot through his hand. Uh, the rest of his body is okay, and, but that was the failed assassination of right. uh, Nucky. And as the scene sort of closes, uh, you can see Jimmy walking out of Babette's, like through the doors, and you hear in the background like, "Oh, he's alive!" And you can and Jimmy's face sort of uh, yeah. 
reflects that. Either he's, you can't tell, either he's mad, he's annoyed that he lived, or he's relieved that he lived. He sort of reacts like, oh, he's he's alive. He's alive, right. Whatever that means to Jimmy. And we never really know. I think, and that's another great thing about the Scorsese vehicle and, and how he drives his characters and his plots is that sometimes you have to make the decision. It's the David Chase end of the Sopranos thing yep. where, right. you know, the guy walks in the door of the restaurant and Tony's sitting there and then it's fade to black. Yep. You kind of get to decide in a lot of these situations where a character's right. head is, right? And, right? and I actually, sometimes I resent that. Sometimes yeah. I, I think. Oh, it's, I think a lot of people resent that. It's well, I mean, it's Americanism at its finest, right? We want the fucking answer, and right, we want it now, right? right? I don't need to be given options. Right. I want to be told what to do, right? Um, That's why so many people barked about the Sopranos, right? right? And and I I generally have comfort in being able to make the decisions or draw my own conclusions. I actually kind of like that because I can play out multiple scenarios in my head. I know a lot of people do have trouble with it, though. I mean, people were yeah. furious at the Sopranos, right? Uh, in that right. case, and I remember this specific moment with Jimmy, I liked the fact that I didn't know whether he was relieved that he was alive or pissed that he was alive, right? And you, you see there's never, a reaction, but you're not sure what it is. Yeah, you, you, there, you get a reaction, but you don't know what it is. And, you not, and the great thing about it is, is you never get the answer. You yeah. really don't. I mean... I don't know. I think, I mean, when I look back on that, I think, and this is just me being sentimental, I think that I was like, oh, see, he really didn't mean, he didn't really mean to shoot that guy. That's your naivety. You know, <laughs> it is. It was like, oh, he loves him. He loves him. He didn't mean to hurt him. Even though I just had him gunned down at right. the nightclub. But, right. yeah, 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 you know, you do. There's part of you that wants to say, oh, they're family. You know, well, they're not really. But, I mean, they're, they're ma- basically family. Well, they were family. Yeah. That's, the th- that's yeah. you know, the underlying message in the in the first couple of seasons with Jimmy Darmody is, look, this was a father-son relationship yep. that completely went sideways. And there were points where it, obviously, where it had to. I mean, it was driven to that by uh, plot development. But there were points where it started to go south, where it could have gone either direction, and it always went south, right? Yep. Uh, and it's uh, it never works out for Jimmy. No matter, no matter whatever wow. happens, he does it never of, work out for anybody in this show. Well, and well you speaking of sure. never working out for Jimmy, I mean, one of the big things that's revealed in season two is just how messed up Jimmy was because of his mother. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. 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 You get a lot of Gretchen Mall and Jimmy. <laughs> In that in season two, which is where she throws her hat in the ring for a creepiest character, it, of no doubt Nintendo about season. it. I mean, well, creepiest yeah. character of all time, <laughs> possibly. Um, there were some very very painful moments where I was turning my head away from the screen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I think it was quintessential to the development of the, the story. It was building since day one. Yeah, of course. I and, mean, and, it, and, it and you kind of knew it and never wanted to even let yourself think it. And then you saw it and you're like, yep, that's right. That's yeah, exactly that's where they were what going. To be. And um, oh, God, I need to throw up. All right, so yeah. for our listeners, we'll just say <laughs> uh, in the clinical sense. There's a scene where Jimmy's uh, mother, who, who really cares for him, um, decides that she must be with Jimmy in a sexual way and he is not really of his right mind when this happens and um, that allows it to go forward and it obviously devastates him for the rest of his life. There's a lot of flashback in this season to, to sort of Jimmy's life before the war and how he got involved in the war. And he was a golden child. Right. He was the golden child and uh, Jillian's advances on Jimmy effectively forced Jimmy to go in the war to get away from all this bullshit. Right, right. exactly. I mean, he had a prince, he had an opportunity to work yep. to be at Princeton. I mean, that did get a little messed up, but he was, and I think that's one of the reasons why Nucky did have this underlying feeling of disdain for James because he did have a father-son relationship with him and he did think, you know, like you see so many gangster movies, you know, I'm going to do this shit, but my next generation's going to be straight, right? It's right, classic right. Al Pacino, right? And Godfather. Totally. Godfather. <laughs> it's Godfather. It's all of it, Matt. right? And so I'll be the monster. And I think Nucky thought, you know what? I know this whole thing is insane, and the Commodore is what it is, but this kid's going to Princeton. We're going to be legit. I'm going to be uh, legit myself. And when Jimmy didn't 
didn't follow through on that, I think Nucky was pissed and let down. The history books are filled with that stuff. I mean, right. Yeah, I think resentful the idea as hell of, in yeah, that situation. Fathers, right? the only goal of the father is to make the son or the daughter better, better than you were. And, right, and, and, and so family. often, it was well, that the American dream? Right. right, right, I mean, right, or it was. I mean, I but think, I mean, people justify a lot of behavior in the name right. of providing, or you know, whatever word you want to use. Yeah, without I, question, I'm happy to take the blame as long as you don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> so in that time. Uh, after Nucky is shot, Jimmy, for a little while, is the short-lived successor to Nucky. He's he's got his. He doesn't last long. It's he's, minutes. Yeah, I think. it's it's in totally the, minutes. Game, yeah, uh, he's taken uh, meetings in in the old Commodores. Uh, right. State, what a beautiful state, house too. Isn't which they gorgeous? talk about that in the DVDs actually. Um, now there, if you see the, the shots that are actually in that giant room with the awesome. Coffered ceilings mm-hmm. and the whole is Beautiful. elaborate. Is it CGI? when they're actually in the room? It's, it's a real place, like in New Jersey or, or somewhere. Um, when they're in the physical room, the real place, none of them are smoking because they're not allowed to because ah. of the historical aspect. So it's all CGI. Whatever. They're not even allowed to, to do it. When you see them smoking in a room similar to that, it's not that. It's room. on a sound it's stage. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. on a sound stage. Oh, like I'm surprised they don't thing. just fake it and then put the smoke. CGI. In there. Smoke. They didn't go that far. It's like there's a couple scenes where the director's like, you know, if they were having this meeting in that room, really, they'd all be smoking. Like, but we couldn't do it because of interesting the regulations and whatever. So anyway, Jimmy's the guy in Atlantic City for about four and a half minutes, and then he is effectively uh, uh, taken down. Um, Manny Horvitz, Manny, yeah, our our, our favorite butcher, um, kills Jimmy's wife. And let's not get into all the. There's any number of endless plot points here, but here are the highlights. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy's wife is killed by the the butcher. Van Savagely. Alden flees his existing relationship to uh, go to Cicero. I mean, to get away from Lucy, and he brings the kid, and he. It's a whole thing. And the nanny. And the nanny. He starts a new life in the Chicago. Crazy, uh, Cicero. Uh, Who doesn't go to Cicero of for redemption? The exactly. crazy Swedish nanny. I mean, seriously. Blocks from Al Capone. Betty Lauren Maltese has yeah. been there blessing people <laughs> since 1952. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, that's another podcast. Uh, it's a whole <laughs> Betty Lauren Maltese that's a different one. podcast. Um, <laughs> like Nucky that. marries Margaret. Eventually, uh, so she can't testify him in any of his. Yeah, talk about a pragmatic move. Right. I know what I'll do. I'll marry her, and then Let's she see. can't bring me down in in court. in court. And of course, she counters with the perfect balance, which is fine. You want to make me wife? Looks like the Catholic Church is getting a few acres. Yeah, few so thousand. she gives them his. Basically, everything he's been working for these past few years is this big this land road, grab. The land grab for the road. So that in his relationship with the presidential election to try and get all that money and everything set up, set for, up. for the right. highway to go into Atlantic City. Um, he's been working on that for years. It's about to happen or close right. to it. And Boom, Margaret gives it to gives it for free. Of course, the charity, the Catholic Church, for that Margaret is but loosely associated with. Loosely. And we may, and we might also just say that 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 is true. But she really does go through this crisis when her her son is sick, and she feels that she is being punished. And so, what does she do? She uses Nucky's chips to pay her debt, um, and she and she gives the gives the land away. I almost don't like. To I really don't like to talk about the kid portion of this because it's, it's so upsetting. I know. To have two sons or kids. Son. Well, I mean, we all have kids, and to have their. To imagine them seeing or experiencing any of this sort of ridiculous insanity and violence and whatever else, it's. I, I have a problem with it. Well, them being used as pawns. When they're on screen, too. I'm like, oh, I don't. I don't yeah, I, I feel like uncomfortable. I, I don't like. I want this world to be full of adults yeah. and right. no kids, right? <laughs> right. I mean, this is uh, this is probably a time in the world wow. when being a kid was probably not as grand as it right. been in uh, any other time, right? Oh, please, Michael. I mean, kids I don't know. today. Are you kidding me? These well, kids are running the world yeah. right now. I right. Mean, 
I mean, it was probably a Before difficult time to be a bad, but. probably probably a difficult time to be a kid. Uh, they were looked at as afterthoughts, also rans. Not it was sort of an in between time. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. You weren't. It wasn't the eighteen fifties. I mean, we needed I mean, them for the farms. It wasn't the nineteen fifties where it was Leave It to Beaver. It was. Yeah. It was, it was this tricky little right like window where where I think I think everything yeah. was askew at that point. Yeah, it was. So and then that sets up some great, great some great fodder for um, season three. So you know we kind of know how things end with the uh, where where things with stand with Eli, who we really haven't devoted much attention to. But Eli Commodore Commodore unfortunately passes away because why his wife his <laughs> maid has so, been poisoning. Yeah, it. so his maid's been poisoning. It, it Which is. I thought was hilarious. I really thought that was hilarious. Jimmy. Jimmy finds out, right? And then he sort of... Rolls. Facilitates the maid being fired, Commodore getting back to health. But then shortly after, in the same season, Jimmy, who is high on heroin at this point, um, kills the Commodore. Right. Which well, you like, knew that day was coming. I know, but it's, it's a weird thing that he wanted him... I mean, they should have named Jimmy Oedipus Rex. Right. I mean, at this point, right. there's so many. But he oh, he yeah. wanted the Commodore at like full strength before he took him down. Yeah. Right. Years, right. That's you know what that's that's the underlying story there is is that he wanted that Commodore dead from the moment he set foot back on. You know, I don't want this maid taking him down with a little bit I'm of poison here and there. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. doing it, yeah. and I'm going to do it in a violent way. And he did, and I oh. Dabney Coleman. And poor Dabney goes down. But it, w- it was God, really... What an actor compelling. he is. Yeah, he's What fantastic. an actor. I mean, he's got a stature without just walking into the scene. You're yeah. just like, I know this is important. He yeah. can really carry the screen. He's good at it. He, he's very he's good. amazing. Absolutely. All right, so we're, se- we're through with season two. I mean, two full seasons. Oh, my well, God. How much time do we have for, for Jeb? Well, yeah. I mean, well, that's I kind of end of season two, beginning of season. Well, all right, well, well, it's we'll, clearly we'll, let's end tackle of, it before we get. No, it was any the further. end of season two. I think we have to wrap that up with the with the death of Jimmy Darmody. I I have to say that I felt the wind was knocked out of my body when that happened. It was like, no, this how can this show go on without Jimmy? And so Nucky kills go. Jimmy in a rainy field, in a rainy around a rainy beach. Beach, right? Um, yeah, and it was I'm sad. surprised it, it it went on this long. I'm surprised he didn't kill him in season one, um, or the early part of season two. Um, I, I think. I mean, I saw it coming forever. Just a matter of how or what would be the final straw. But even when you saw it, you're like, oh, that's major. It like, still stung. That's, that's that's oh, it's done. That was I our mean, character, the guy whose eyes. Right. Well, we were. I yeah. think we were seeing through. Right. right? Your right. setup at the beginning is is we're viewing this whole. So thing now through the eyes of Jimmy. But Dunn. now you know that that opportunity for redemption is gone. Totally. And let's move on to the next massive. <laughs> right. So and you really do feel sort of lost as to it's also one of those things where you're like really. The second season, they're going to kill off a main character? I mean, it took guts. It took a, a strong, strong... Marty Scorsese does what he wants. And But that move <laughs> sets up season three. And I don't want to jump into season three just yet, but um, that, for the first season and a half, let's say, the theme was, you can't be half a gangster. Right. The right. last half of that season, culminating with Jimmy's death, is, now I'm a full Now gangster. I'm a full yeah. Fuck the political stuff. Now I'm... I'm the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I'm the gangster. this animal. And right. it had to be done. I mean, it really had to be and done. And season three is... Oh. And, and, I mean, season four, too, but season three is so goddamn gangster. Yeah. It's... There's... People are dying left and right in season three, and it's double crosses, and it's... There's, there's no holds barred in season three. Did you have something you wanted to say before we got to <laughs> season three? Well, I kind of do. Cause I, I kind of want to recap, because we're... Yes, please We do. have sort of a midpoint for the first two seasons, the last two seasons. Right? Because season three is a real turning point. I don't oh even know my. where to go with season three. Well, well season I, three, I, we, I, we I, can I devote tell you right now, two I was hours fucking well, terrified. Two hours to Jip. Season, season three, exactly. Is Jip. That, that, that's the I, mean, Jip is I mean, I'm, I, the whole I mean, I mean, I would literally yeah. get, get anxiety watching him. Yeah. So, if we're marking our scorecards through the first two seasons, creepiest character, I'm, I'm going 
slight. Well, I want to go Van Alden because I think he is. I think that's the obvious choice. Scariest and creepiest. But I gotta go. But at the end of that last couple episodes, where Jillian, you see how Jillian fucked up Jimmy and how she is fucked up. I think, she's she, I think she's creepiest. I think she's, she's creepiest. The, she is the most twisted character in the show. Right. I mean, I think that there's... I mean, I do think they're trying. They're trying with Richard, but that's, you know, that's benign at this he's point. He's not creepy. He's, he's not creepy at all. Yeah. I mean, no, but he he's was uh, he was introduced to, to intimidate in that regard. And then Van Alden, for sure. I mean, the flogging, I mean, come on. It's almost like yeah, he's, he's creepy early, she's creepy late. And because she's the most recent thing I can think of, maybe the most severe, um, Yeah, but she, she her, wins. her thing just builds. Right, I mean, right. she is truly, right. I mean... Delusional? Oh, she's she's all yeah, of it. Delusional. You have to admire her poise. Oh my God, the woman. I will, I will say for me, and I looked, when I looked at, you know, where we're going with the outline on this, I was thinking, give me a a saddest character and give me a creepiest character. I think creepiest, I'm going to go with Arnold Rothstein. In the, oh, wow. In a very particular role of a historical mm. character. I like Because it, he's just a strange, kind of gives See, you I a would wrong go, feeling. I, would, I like that. I'd Michael. characterize him differently. I would say he's the scariest one. Because he, he is cold, calculated. Right. I don't know what's happening behind his eyes. No, but I'm waiting for that. That something's going to crumble with him. But anyway. no, but because he's a right. historical character, nothing. Sure. It is. It's going to play. It's right. going to play, play out the, the way, way we know it it's played, play played out. out exactly. Right. Exactly. So that kind of is what it is. Saddest Good. character, I would go with uh, uh, with Jillian. Yeah. Right. I it, mean, you're right. It because really in a way, is. she's, she's a been product. She's a so. she's a product of her environment. She's been broken since she was probably ten. Right? And everything in her life has been surrounded by negativity, um, bad password thinking. I mean, she's kind of been driven down this path her whole life. It doesn't justify any of the actions that she's taken. No. But it just makes it a whole sad story to me. It does. And that is why, as the seasons progress, you are able to, even even though you don't want to, you are able to develop some empathy for her as she moves on. Which until we get to season four, yeah, no, in well, season four okay. even, we yeah, thing, when she, when she, with with Ron Livingston, I mean, you finally say, oh come on. Through the first two seasons, there's an opportunity for a happy end. Yes. Who was. do you, who do you, who would you fear most? Who, which character, had you been in that world? I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but um, yeah, Rothstein. Which one? Yeah. Do you not want to have on your bad side, Rothstein? He's a guy who gets shit done in the worst possible ways. I think it's Rothstein. Nucky? Nucky is a guy you don't no, want to No, I think bets. there's humanity. But I think, I, 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 think, I think there's yeah. still, at this point in time, after season two, even though he's he's had Jimmy whacked, or whacked Jimmy himself, there's still an opportunity for Nucky. Not I think the Commodore is pretty scary. Oh, well, it might be. I mean, there's there's a lot of contenders in this. Category. I mean, Ross seems a good call. I ha- I'll have to say, but um, I'll go. I, I think the answer. I think the correct answer is Rothstein. If there's a right or wrong. <laughs> I don't um, know if there's a right or wrong, but I mean, I really like it. One, I will say <laughs> that I like it. Maybe it doesn't come out quite yet. Although I think it's there, um, because he's almost. This is almost counterintuitive, but he's almost a robot. I'll say Richard Harrow. Really? Saddest? Scariest. No, scariest. scariest. It, yes. Were you to get on his bad side... Because they're waiting for that to overflow. He's tunnel focused. Vision. Right, tunnel focused. vision, right? Yeah. And he's broken. But I think he has a moral compass, so you'd have to be an asshole to get on his bad side. I think when we when we go down that path of there are no redeeming characters in this whole plot line, mm-hmm. he one. might be the one. Mm-hmm. He might be the one. But you you touched he's, on he's something here. He's just he, so broken. He does have a moral compass, but he is also um, completely willing to do whatever it takes to rectify a situation right. because of that moral compass. Right. Even resorting to killing. Yeah. He, he's a trained killer. He's a gun for yeah. hire. Yeah. I mean, that's his M.O. I mean, he was a sharpshooter in the war, right? And, uh, well, that's that in season four. That. Yeah, takes we yeah we get stage. to see that center stage, right? Mm. <laughs> All right, uh, 
quick recap of season two. I, I want to just throw out a couple idea or a couple characters that we well, we didn't gloss over. We talked about them, but four that play a significant role that we didn't talk about a ton. We touched on both of them, all, all four of them, really. Uh, Owen Slater as the uh, oh, driver. Yeah. Um, one thing I liked. In watching the DVD commentary, and this is my common theme, is the insight that I get from the the uh, directors and stuff. Um, he you, he comes over as a mysterious figure, and then you see him take take down. I mean, find, track, and kill a uh, uh, an IRA, IRA, IRA traitor, yeah, basically an informer. Garrots him in, in the bathroom. Yeah, um, and. I think that was a choice of the actor or the director for the the method of the execution, because he wanted him to feel it. He wanted him to know, you're getting "I'm up. killing you," I'm, not a yeah, bullet, not a killed. knife, but a slow, painful, agonizing death of a grot wire on your your neck. Oof. I don't even know what that means. Grot it's wire. a it's, it's a wire yeah. with a couple of handles that you can you can put a lot of force on someone's neck. Tense. Yeah, you you you. Yes, I you double it over scene. behind your neck and you you pull it twice. Pull it. And that in the sense. scene, he's got his hand in there even to, to to stop it, but it's a it's a wire. So he's cutting and through he, his hand. At the very end, right before he dies, he cuts his fingers off. You, you see his his three or four fingers yeah. fall off into Sheer the urinal, anger. and he falls his face first into the urinal. A lot of anger in that scene. Right, a lot of anger. Wonderful. <laughs> One little thing he does. I don't think this is a real thing, but it's it looked awesome on film. When he goes, because they he, they follows him into a bar, um, yeah, and then the guy, the Irish guy, the, the trader goes into the bathroom, and then uh, Owen goes into the bathroom after him. Guys at the urinal, Owen closes the door, has a spoon, put jams it in the door, and then puts the, the spoon head on the uh, uh, door knob to that's some sort of a stop. Whether it works or not, I don't know, but it looked like a, looked like cool. something he had done, like a common way to jam like a door and no one can come in. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It was like a very... This is, this is not Johnny Yeah, Irish. this is some rookie. an IRA... Right. This is a hit. This man. Is a yeah, this is a hit. Person. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Uh, a couple other characters. Uh, we talked about Manny Horowitz. I think... I wish that guy had a bigger role. He, he's... Maybe it's the actor. Cause it, I think that guy was amazing with his, with his butcher I, I absolutely... I, everything that guy's ever done has been... Just epically crazy, yeah. you know. He's a, he's a guy amazing. with a lot of not a lot of range, but the <laughs> character he plays is it's a good point. Phenomenal. Uh, yeah. An un, she may be just a, an afterthought, but uh, the character of Sigrid as the uh, Norwegian nanny, yes, yeah. um, slash wife, yeah, kind of a cool character. She, she is the only one who sort of stood up to Van Alden ever. In and she way. and she really steers him in a lot of ways. Right, like she's telling him, "Get out there and do what you need to do to Season make things three, right." She gets him out selling the uh, the, yeah, irons, the, the Swedish the irons alcohol. Or whatever they're yeah. Oh, the yeah, Swedish yeah, the booze, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the irons, the, 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 the iron first. The great, the great scene like, where he wha- where he beats the guy with the. <laughs> she's iron. making homemade <laughs> booze and, and, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and and has him go ship them off to sell it. Right. Yeah. Well, so all the women in Boy tricky, Rock Empire, tricky. I have to say, as the woman on this panel, yeah. all have a, a strength. Uh, yep. This is a very, very and they exercise it strength. In, in different ways. Yeah, uh, sort of sure. sneaky ways. It, but it's they are, good. They are not. They are not shrinking violets. These ladies. They all have figured out a way to navigate these assholes. To the get through the time, yeah. right? The one we didn't talk about is. Uh, and I, th- I think he's from Philly too. But I cannot keep anyone straight because I'm too old at this point. <laughs> My memory is gone. Uh, George Remus, yeah. the character. The w- the one thing I liked, and it kind of set him up as a doofus, is that he would speak about himself in third person. <laughs> and th- well, I'm sure that was by design. And it, it's not subtle, but I love it because. It's so obvious. Like this guy's an idiot. He doesn't he doesn't get the whole thing? And <laughs> he's going down hard. Thought that was good. All right. Uh, season three. We're going to open with basically Jip Rossetti and Bobby Cannavale. All right. Oh god, he's amazing. I, I, I can't even. Let's take a break. You get the Let's sweats thinking about it. Oh, that guy's amazing. I 
guy right. is, I mean, that was disturbing. Sorry for the abrupt end of the show, but for the first few episodes where we recap each season, we recorded them all in one sitting and needed to break up the discussion into consumable, bite-sized pieces centered around each season. Thank you for listening to the Boardwalk Breakdown podcast, and follow us on Twitter at Boardwalk Break. Future episodes of this podcast will focus on a single episode of Boardwalk Empire, 